Hello and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills in today's segment of Build Your Difference. I'm your host, Pierre Walters, and our guest today is Gilbriana Shaw, a real visionary and the owner of The New Culture, a professional women's clothing company. I'm so excited to be joined today by Gilbriana. How are you doing, Gilbriana? <laughs> welcome to the show. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I want to know how you started your company, when you started your company, and why you started your company. Tell me, okay. tell me about the origin of The New Culture. <laughs> so I guess you could say we officially... We got our LLC January 2020, but okay. we've had this brand and idea for so long, since about 2014 actually. But I was in other business ventures at the time, so I really didn't have time for this. So I just made like the new, I made the new coach, I wrote it on my wall, you know, like post-it note style and just like, I'm gonna do that, but just not right now. Mm -hmm. So I always knew I wanted to be in fashion. Um, as a child, I used to make clothes and mm -hmm. sew. I did like prom stuff for people, like always dibbled and dabbled into fashion. Okay. But I wasn't really ready to take the full leap until um, 2020, actually. So, what was your initial inspiration in 2000? You said 2014. Yeah. What was your initial inspiration to say, you know what? One day I am going to launch my own fashion business. I yeah. Mean, that is that's huge. I, I so, know. what was the inspiration? <laughs> Where did it come from? Um, honestly, I've always been entrepreneurial. Okay. I just didn't know where I wanted to be, and I always loved clothes. Like, I was a girl who used to like mix and match crazy looking clothes okay. in middle school and high school, and people were like, what does she got on? I mean, I like it, but like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I can make you one, like, you know, super excited like that. So, um, I always knew I was going to do something with fashion, but when I became a little bit older and I realized like it was really a need in the marketplace for mm -hmm. women's fashionable suits. Okay. Like no offense to the regular department stores, but I'm so sick of seeing black and navy as my only options. But me, I, you know, I make suits with vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. I find different things that really make women feel feminine and empowered within the workplace, not just like boring. <laughs> I kind of want to dive into that actually. <laughs> you're, you're, you're focusing on women it, and it seems like you're focusing specifically on women in the workplace. Yeah. Why? Why did you? Why did you decide to make that your niche? Yeah. Honestly, I. It's like for me, I. I've never really been in corporate, corporate, right? Okay. I've never had like a corporate job for a long extended time. That's not my story. I'm an entrepreneur, like all through my blood, okay. so I can't stay at a job too long, okay? But um, that's just honest. I understand. But, <laughs> but for me, I've, I've seen, like, women do not have as much space in the corporate world. Like, they have to climb the ladder. It takes them so much longer to get to certain points that men are at. Like, most companies are male-dominated. That's okay. just how it is. So I wanted to make room for women to, like, showcase themselves and say, like, hey, I'm, I'm my skills, I'm my looks, I'm everything all in one. And mm -hmm. I could do just what you guys do. Mm -hmm. Like, probably in half the time, honestly, because women are, like, we're multitaskers and we're really good at it. So I just feel like more men should put women at the table and they would see that their table is totally different, so. What is it about fashion today uh, that that hinders that? Like, yeah. well, I'm curious about the role that fashion plays in that sort of, uh, I wanna say equality, yeah. but that, that kind of, you know, both men and women have a seat at the table. Yeah. What's what is the role that fashion plays? To, yeah. This is new to me. Yeah. I, I, I honestly I haven't thought about this. Yeah. So <laughs> you're kind of educating me at the moment. Tell me more. So like. You know the saying, like, don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people say that, but I'm like, the cover is literally the first thing you see. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. if the cover looks weird, if it's a weird picture, sometimes if it's scratched a little bit too much, it's like you won't even pick up the book. Mm -hmm. So your image really does matter. And as a society, we kind of went away from dressing, dressing up. Everything is so cash right now. Everything is, like, leisure, mm -hmm. athleisure. Like, people aren't getting dressed anymore and like especially in a workplace like it makes a difference when you come to work polished presentable ready to like start your day so that's really important like just making sure you look the part so before you even open your mouth they're like i want to hear what she has to say even before she starts talking mm -hmm. like that's really important i, I remember when i was a, a young uh kid at, at some point in i guess high school or something a teacher said to me pierre you gotta you gotta embrace dressing for success yeah and uh I, that kind of stuck with me. Yeah. I think at some, I think I kind of went a little, I think I went a little overboard <laughs> with it because I started wearing suits to places that probably weren't actually in a place. I'm going to McDonald's play. in a suit. Yeah, today. I was just like always. In, um, and, and now I, I think I'm definitely, I've kind of gotten into more of a, like you said, actually kind of a little more of a casual yeah. situation. I don't know that, um, 
I don't know that that's like the the best thing mm -hmm. to do. I probably <laughs> should like you know dress up, yeah. you know. Um, but I think that it's really important to to have that mindset of dressing for success, yeah. Dre dressing for the way that you want people to. Uh, to react mm -hmm. and to respond to you. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things that is really important to us, especially on the show, is we talk when we're talking about building your difference, yeah. is understanding the role that branding plays mm -hmm. in our businesses yeah. and in how we get customers yeah. and how we show the world who we are. So, yeah. so in what you do in the, in 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 the new culture, it's it's it is helping, and, and I'm I'm assuming, but I'm guessing it is helping people to find their brand, their yeah. actual brand, yeah, physically, and yeah. dress according to their yeah. brand. Is that, are we right? That's are a fact, okay. yeah, okay. like, especially like, for a lot of our women, they're, they're already powerful women. They, yeah. We don't, we're not like a brand that's like, we're gonna build your confidence, like we attract confident women. We attract you confidence. You know, so it's okay. like, she's already powerful, she's mm -hmm. already doing things in the marketplace. She's, you know, gearing to be the top person at our company, or she owns a business, she's developing a brand, she's, you know, out in the community doing stuff. Like, she's already active and moving mm -hmm. in that regard, and she's having brand photo shoots. She's naturally the brand. Like, her okay. name is the brand, even before she starts something. Okay. So that's really the type of women that I attract and I can I hope that I aspire to always attract these type of women, mm -hmm. you know, who are like bold and powerful because mm -hmm. I mean the world really just needs to see more of that. And like in this day and age everyone really is a personal brand, but everyone doesn't know how to be a brand. Everyone doesn't know how to be a brand. That is, <laughs> oh, I, that is powerful. Yeah. That is powerful. Um I, okay, so there are multiple brands that offer women's suits yeah, and you, for when sure. we started the this this episode you were talking about how you know you have nothing against the department stores right. but secretly we probably do have something <laughs> against the department stores it's what boring. makes the <laughs> yeah well and it's and it's very assembly line-ish yeah, probably and it's, the experience it's, is just like it's just i mean you go into the mall mm -hmm. everyone's like can I help you with something? Can I help you with something? No, you can leave me alone. I don't even see anything I like here. So like, it's not really <laughs> genuine. It's not yeah. really a genuine experience. And I think people people love uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Like they love a experience. Everything has to be experienced now, mm -hmm. or people just don't want to do it because there's so many options of where you could go, where you could spend your time. Like, isn't an is it an experience? So even us being an e-commerce, I still try to bring that experience. I try to engage with my customers on social. We have events, stuff okay. like that. We want to bring the actual environment to people, if that makes sense. Yeah, I want to dive more into that, yeah. into that about what makes the new culture shopping experience so unique and yeah. so special, you know, yeah. that you're able to attract the right kind of customer, but also keep that customer yeah. uh, coming back. So For sure. tell me more about the, the shopping experience, both online and and in your events. Tell me yeah. more about that new culture experience. Yeah, so in our actual events, we do fittings. Okay. So a lot of women do not know what size they wear. We are in a culture of small, medium, large, extra large, you know, stuff like that. Everything stretches. So when a woman sees a suit, she's like, oh, that's so cute. I have no idea what size I wear. Mm -hmm. So at our in-person events, we actually take their measurements. We're like, you know, based on your size, based on your bust, your hips, you will probably wear, you know, size 34 pants. You will okay. probably wear this size blazer. So they actually feel comfortable knowing that their garment is going to fit. That's one of the first things that we do at, in our in-person experience. On our online store, we actually have um, like a little widget where you could type in um, your sizes that you usually wear in pants and stuff mm -hmm. like that, what stores you usually shop at, and we'll kind of curate what size you'll wear on our website. Interesting. So that's something we do as well. Um, and we say we try to take customer service to the next level. So mm -hmm. if something doesn't fit, we like to get on the phone with you and see what was happening. You know, mm -hmm. just recently I had um, a woman, she's like, I got it on my legs, but these thighs, girl, uh-uh. Like, mm -hmm. that's literally what she said. And I'm like, okay, so based on what you told me, a size four fit, but I wasn't really considering her build. Mm -hmm. You know, she's an athletic build. She's like, my legs are really muscular. My my thighs are really muscular. I work out my legs every day. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, it makes sense why I didn't fit. Mm -hmm. But in um, us actually communicating and calling our customers, I think that's how we really take it to the next level because we want to make sure the next time you shop with us, it fits. Like, that's important. So, What have you learned about your, your customers in terms of their needs, and especially post-pandemic? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure things have changed definitely uh, from the shopping experience leading up to 2020 yeah. and then since you launched in 2020 what what have you learned about how to adapt yeah. to your customers needs in this sort of new age that we're yeah. in yeah so it's 
It's different now. I feel like this is probably the weirdest time we've had during the pandemic okay. because it's like a lot of people are going back to work. Some people are even forced to go back to work at this point. They're mm -hmm. like, no more working from home. You, you guys are not producing. You know, companies are kind of making it what they want to. And some companies are completely on online and work from home only now. They mm -hmm. have completely shut down shop. So I've seen some people are like, I'm only buying blazers now. Why? Because they got PJs on the bottom. What's the point? You know, PJs and slippers. And they're just not okay. You're giving away it. my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> they're not even into it. But um, then there's other people who have who have like high positions. They have to show up. You know, mm -hmm. like they have to either travel for work. They have to make sure they still are looking polished and presentable. A lot of these people are leaders within their company. Mm -hmm. So while they would love to stay home and just be cash, they actually have to show up to the workplace because they run shop. Mm -hmm. So I've noticed that, you know, some people have took a dip and only buy certain pieces now. That's why I do sell pieces as well. I don't always sell just full suits. I want to give you options. Like you could wear the full suit or you could just wear the blazer or just the pants, depending on how you feel. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's a that's a smart way to adapt, and also yeah. the, the the fact that you're focusing on that sort of tailored customer experience yeah. when you when they do see you in person or yeah. when you, when you're taking their phone calls. For sure. It sounds like that's really the the sort of that's the differentiating yeah. factor moving. Customer moving. service yeah. makes a big difference. Yeah. Like. It's not really just customer service, it's more so customer experience. Okay. Like customer what are they experience. experiencing with you? Okay. Like what's gonna make them come back? Like I want you to say, when I shopped um, with Kelly at the New Culture, mm -hmm. this is what I experienced, mm -hmm. you know? And I want them to be able to tell a story, mm -hmm. to actually feel something from shopping with me, mm -hmm. other than just having a transaction. Cause you can shop anywhere, you can spend your money anywhere, but what makes me different is the experience. When you were beginning your journey as an entrepreneur, yeah. even when you had this idea back in 2014 did yeah. you did you realize at that time just how much customer service you would be doing or oh, how much customer no. service was going to be required I hate customer service <laughs> I love customers You heard it here first folks <laughs> <laughs> I love customers but the actual customer service piece because it's always adapting yeah. and with every situation mm -hmm. it's kind of like a new challenge mm -hmm. it's kind of like you know when jobs say well what are your critical thinking skills like mm -hmm. I don't know put me in a situation and let me find yeah. out today like so with my customers it's always me learning literally in that moment like mm -hmm. from the beginning I remember having customers and saying like my item didn't come and I'm like well the tracking says it arrived like I don't know what's going on so in that moment I had to say okay do I give my customer a refund yeah. or oh do I wait for this situation to play out and at the beginning I didn't really know what to do mm -hmm. so in some instances I got chargebacks and I'm mm -hmm. like that's like the worst thing you could get for a business it is the worst thing and you I'm can like get. <sighs> wait I did my part, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. now it's like, okay, if your item doesn't come, we will do this, yeah. you know, so I had to start making the experience better, yeah. you know. Let, let's dive Let's dive more into that, I mean, making the experience better. Yeah. So we're, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to learn more about the new culture. <laughs> Since 1974, the Women's Center has provided mental health services in Northern Virginia and D.C. One in five adults experience mental illness each year, but the high cost of counseling can often leave members of our community suffering alone. The Women's Center offers our services on a sliding scale, so no one is turned away due to their inability to pay. For 45 years, the Women's Center has been a beacon of hope and healing. Visit thewomenscenter.org to learn more. And welcome back. You're watching Skills to Pay the Bills in today's segment of Build Your Difference with my special guest, Gilbriana Shaw. She is the owner and CEO of The New Culture. And prior to the break, we were discussing elevating the customer experience yeah. and the challenges that come Definitely. as a part of that. I want to know... You know, since I know you're already, you've already been an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but but you started this specific business in 2020, and since yeah. that time, I want to know has has this business caused you to learn or develop new skills yeah. in your role as a CEO? Definitely, um, <laughs> my role right now is almost all of the roles. Yeah. Like I'm I'm still that entrepreneur, you know, we've had we had help at the beginning and then things took a dip. So it's like do I keep my help or do I try to pivot by myself? So like I've had to learn a lot of things and really it's how to react to your environment and mm. what's going on around you because 
you can make a 10-year business plan, but what happens when in year one, a pandemic hits? That's nothing that anyone planned for. So for me, I had to learn, okay, how do I get creative? Mm -hmm. Like, where is my revenue going to come from now? Do I have to change certain metrics in my business? Do I have to change how I'm getting my customers? So I've had to develop so many different skills. And one of the main ones is like how to persevere through a challenge mm -hmm. because like I said, I didn't plan for challenges this early in the business. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, after the the hype of the business dies down, maybe that's a challenge. But I didn't know, you know, a global pandemic was going to happen because <laughs> <laughs> it changed everything. It changed how quick my manufacturers what, were actually making. You didn't make, get the memo? You know, it was listen, coming. Listen, <laughs> I mean, I know the government probably knew before us, but no one told me. They didn't text me. <laughs> so yeah, it was. Oof, it yeah. was a challenge, you know. I understand that, you know, there's a there's a special place in your heart and in your business for serving uh, mothers. Yeah. Okay, and that and that that is something that uh, you're 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 really sort of paying special emphasis on. Yeah, for sure. And so I have two questions. The first is, are you a mother yourself? I am. Okay, and how has that how has that uh, affected Changes your everything. your your vision of running the business yeah. and what that means. Tell yeah. me about the changes So there. I have a son, baby Remy, Remington Shaw. Okay. Um, Remington Shaw. He's that, is a, that is a good name. Yeah, listen. Remington Shaw is Rem a good name. His name is actually Remington Yale Shaw, oh. if that makes a difference. <laughs> listen, okay, he does not come to play. His parents make suits. He's a very elite nine-month-old. He's like, <laughs> my mom makes a joke. And she's like, he calls you guys peasants, like, when you're not around. He's like, give me my bottle, peasants. Like, And that's the <laughs> face that he looks at us with. And we're like, okay. We did name him Remington, so you got to be careful what you name your children. Um, yeah, so <laughs> being a mother really has changed my um, aspect on everything, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, what my priorities are in my business. Um, what I have to set boundaries on now because before the old Gilly could work 11 hours a day and get a nice nice rest yeah. at night and then wake up and do it all over again but now my schedule is different you know with a nine month old he does what he wants and I kind of operate <laughs> on his schedule honestly so maybe sometime I don't have as much time as I used to on the business so I have to really prioritize certain things during the day okay I need to do this this and this and it has to get done yeah. you know so that's really something that's been a major shift for me um, being well, a working mom what would you say to the other other working moms who are yeah. out there watching today who are who are maybe interested in entrepreneurship yeah. and getting into that what would you what would you say to them in terms of <laughs> moving forward and, and, and pursuing entrepreneurship yeah it's it's a lot but it can be done um, it's easy to feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. especially depending on your support system but you sometimes you just have to draw back and you have to say okay I'm a new person now so all my brands are new in you um, and new actually means evolving okay. so like evolving women so the new culture is evolving culture in the workplace okay. that's what it's about and my my newest brain is new momish so it's the new mom evolving into herself so it's all of these new things and you have to realize you're a different person now so mm -hmm. you have to operate as such and you have to take your new identity not as like a hindrance but as something that's progressing you forward okay I'm this new person let's learn how to be her yeah. let's learn you know her time management let's learn her boundaries let's learn everything about what she's got going on and that's important to understand that you're not who you used to be and that's okay you yeah. just have to prioritize things a little different where do you see your 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 businesses uh, in the next three to five years what's yeah. the vision so um, I'm on a mission to help women evolve to help in women all evolve. aspects okay. so you know your life doesn't stop when you become a mom your mm -hmm. life doesn't stop when you don't get that job like you can still evolve and progress into everything that you want to be mm -hmm. um, as long as you just are determined to hit that goal and keep the faith so like that's really my overall mission so I'm creating resources in all different spaces mm -hmm. for women to consistently and constantly evolve that's incredible yeah. and I I'm curious about you know, you, you mentioned right now. I know about the new culture, and then you you mentioned a new a newer business. Yeah. The new. Did you say momish? Momish. Momish. The new momish. Yeah. Okay. So, so they're under this umbrella of right. new. Yeah. Is 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 that like uh? Is there? Are, can we expect more? 
businesses under this? For sure. I actually, I had another business when I was like, Six months po um six months pregnant, I started okay. a business. Like, cause I was like, I couldn't physically really work the new culture because it was too much labor okay. involved and I was just too tired. But I started like a coaching business for women and I had like mastermind groups and all this. That seems like a natural for yeah. you. I oh, mean, yeah, that, I will start a business, saying. okay? <laughs> no, but I mean specifically coaching. Yeah. I mean with 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 what you're saying about helping women evolve, yeah. I mean, and how that's kind of the the through line between yeah. in other in your other businesses. Mm -hmm. It's seems like being a speaker or being a coach is yeah. kind of a, a natural pivot yeah. or a natural um, additional thing that you For would sure. offer. So tell me more about that. Yeah. Um, is, is that something that you still offer? Yeah. Yes and no. Okay. Um, it's always a passion of mine to help people like that. So I'll do something like, hey, I'm going to do a four month um, I mean, a four-week program, mm -hmm. if you guys are interested, you can sign up here. Like, I'll do something like that. But my main mission right now is the new culture and new mommies. So those okay. are the brands that I'm really pushing. Anything mm -hmm. else is, when I list those priorities, it's not as high. But it will be something that we offer. And, you know, when we get more support in that area, I can offer it more. So maybe it could be a spinoff to new mommies. Like, new mommies is resources for women. But I have a business coach within new mommies who mm -hmm. can help women develop their businesses. So something like that. So w what is the um, what is the the, 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 the primary tip mm -hmm. okay or a uh, uh, piece of insight yeah. that you would share with not just moms but any entrepreneur yeah. who's, um, who's watching you today and is inspired by your story I mean look mm -hmm. we're, we're not just talking about right now we're talking we've talked about two businesses yeah. so far that you operate and, and own and you said there are more from before you launched the yeah. new culture. So you are a serial entrepreneur yeah. <laughs> and you're clearly very successful. Yeah. You dress to impress and <laughs> I need to, I know I need to step my game up. Um, so like- My husband's gonna see this interview like, that man needs a suit or a consultation, <laughs> something. He needs some, some cash, something. <laughs> and, he's, and he's probably right. Um, tell, me, tell me about what primary tip or insight you would offer to, to people who are just inspired by your story yeah. and want to um, really actualize in their own in their own lives. Yeah. Literally always keep growing. Like always, keep always growing. do things to enhance your mind. Mm -hmm. Like and enhancing your mind should be just as habitual as brushing your teeth in the morning. Okay. Like it should be something that you actively do like invest in your personal development whether that's financially going to conferences or um, buying a book or just listening to a podcast, you know, mm -hmm. something, do something to enrich your mind and get around the people that you want to be like. Mm -hmm. Business advisory, mentorship, those are some of the things that have really helped me develop as an entrepreneur. If I wasn't able to get in certain rooms with certain people, maybe I wouldn't be where I am right now because their wisdom helped me avoid certain mistakes in mm -hmm. business, you know, because when you get around these people and they're able to share their knowledge with you, you can see the mistakes they made and you're like, okay, well, I see you went this way, so I'm gonna just jump over here like this and I'm gonna avoid that mistake. Or because you went through this situation, I know how to handle it and get through it quicker now. That's why you invest in mentors. That's why you invest in programs and coaching and develop yourself so you can really be ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. so. Who, who are some of the people that inspire you? Sarah Blakely. I yeah. love me yeah. some Sarah Blakely. Listen, I brought my first pair of Spanx after I had a baby. And I was like, I just want to be like Sarah. Um, just her story was super inspirational. Um, I don't know if you saw, but she was able to give um, her whole woman's company like bonuses and a yeah. trip to anywhere they I wanted to go. I did see that go. in the news, actually. Yeah, Probably and I was yeah. like, imagine that. Imagine having a red backpack and an idea and then building a company of women and mm -hmm. being able to do something like that for them. So, yeah. That's incredible. So, so I want to be so, like so, Sarah. It, so <laughs> in the next three to five years, your future employees, that's what they can, that's what they for can look sure. forward to for working sure. with you. Yeah, okay. I just want to be able to take care of people, love mm -hmm. on them and, you know, develop them and help them evolve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you have any, um, any, uh, other, uh, like, uh, I would say, uh, associates or contemporaries in, you're, you're, you're coming from Baltimore, right? Mm -hmm. So in Baltimore, in your neck of the woods, do you yeah. have contemporaries or associates that you want to give a shout out to? Is there any um, um, other business that, that, that you feel, <laughs> you know, 
has affected your growth and what yeah. you're doing that's kind of local that yeah. you might want to give a shout out well, to? Well, actually, um, my good friend, Karee Harris, mm -hmm. we've been doing business together for years. Um, she's my accountability partner. We talk every single week. Yeah. We have like an hour call and it really keeps me sharp. And, you know, she does so much. She's an entrepreneur, so she works within a company. She's created her own position within mm -hmm. her company. That's how, like, sharp she is. <laughs> I mean, project management is her thing. Mm -hmm. You can give her an idea, and she will lay out your next three to five years mm -hmm. and the action steps that you should do. So she's really someone that I personally love as a dear friend, but mm -hmm. also I look up to as a business advisor as mm -hmm. well because she's able to give, like, so many different things within my business. Yeah. So much, so much insight. So she's the one that I would give my shout out to, my girl Karee Harris. That is wonderful. <laughs> that, that that is wonderful. For sure. Well, I wanna I wanna say thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate having thank you, you and hearing your story. And for people who wanna visit the new culture or does the is the new mommy ish? Does that is that now live? New mom ish. Yeah. So we don't have our website yet. Okay. We do have our, um, our Instagram at new mom ish. Okay. So okay. so yeah. so those of us who who do want to go to the new culture. Yeah. Tell us how we can get there. How can we how can we find yeah. out more about you? Um, everyone can go to www.thenewculture.com. I don't know if I should you know say you can it. say that right to me. It's okay. <laughs> www.thenewculture.com. Uh -huh. Um, okay. they connect. They can connect with us at connect at thenewculture.com. Mm -hmm. That's our email. Okay. Um, and on social media at thenewculture underscore. Very so, cool. And that's N U for the new. N U. I love it. <laughs> and and one thing I learned here today is that N U new means evolve. Yep. And and so really it's about evolving. <laughs> so listen, it's that time again. And if you have any questions about today's segment, please see the information scrolling below. You've been watching Skills to Pay the Bills in today's segment of Build Your Difference. My name is Pierre Walters. And I want to thank you so much. Have a great week.